throughout history, the papacy always need political power to ride his own horse. He need the political backing. He need the armies, he need the governments in order to force people to become Roman Catholics. We see that this is not the power of the Holy Spirit, this is not the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is a political power being manipulated and used by a religious system that is not even a religious system, but a cover-up of a religion to protect and cover the truly identity of the Roman Catholic system and there is no other than political power. Their political ambitions are being well known through our history. And right from the beginning, from the birth of Roman Catholicism, we see that was born under political power, under the Constantine, the emperor. Under false pretensions, the emperor Constantine himself proclaimed himself a Christian and proclaimed himself as a witness of Jesus Christ being risen. He speak about a vision that there is no doubt there was a false vision, a satanic vision, not a Christian vision, leading to understand that again the political powers of the earth cannot survive alone either. Not only the religious power cannot survive without the political power, the political powers of the earth could not survive without religion. This is why we know that governments eventually will go along with the Vatican in order to set up their own political system and their own religious system. Government must be warned about this. Governors, princes, kings, presidents of countries and nations, they must be alert about this tragedy not only, but about this conspiracy on the part of the Vatican against every political establishment in every country, in every nation. Listen now how even the political power that is backing the religious power, that red horse that is being driven by the rider of this particular horse, bring a special commissions, as we saw, commissions that identify the protection and the defense of the religious power in every country and every nation. And then we see that this same power that is backing throughout the years and throughout the centuries and even on till this day, that religious power, that mystical power, now can manifest them in a very special manner to be protected mystically, that political power. And you can see that there is no other religious order in the world that has more identity with the rider of the black horse than the Jesuit order. And that particular rider began to ride this horse precisely when the Jesuit order was established. Ignatius of Loyola was precisely the fulfillment of this very prophecy. Let me, you, uh, and myself, let's get together in the reading of this rider of the black horse. Let me explain not only, but let me bring to your attention how through history this prophecy already was in function and has been fulfilled. Chapter 6 of the book of Revelation, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I hear the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him have a pair of balances in his hands. And I hear a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou heard not the oil and the wine. Now, this commission is very very much, very much in the midst of any nation, of any political system, of any country, of any society. We have here, in the commission of the rider of this black horse, we have here not only characteristics of him dealing 
with justice, with law, but at the same time with economy. Law and economy. Impressive. Now we are to know who is this writer that specializes in law and specializes in economy. The economy of the nation, not just one nation, the economies of the nation. We are seeing more evidence and proof today than never before in the history of every civilization that today more governments are given to a universal economy than more than a national economy. The proof is the European market is one example. The Pan American and the Central American market that is beginning to open. And now the Trinity of Canada with United States and Mexico to be more pragmatic, more contemporary in prophecy throughout the present history of all these political, economical activities that is taking place. Who is behind these persuasions? Who is behind these plans and ideas of a universal economy? Not only, but a universal judicial system that already is working in La Haye. We can see that already is an international tribunal that is, is being called more often to intervene in the affairs of other nations and between nations and nations. A universal tribunal. And every single of these entities, including the United Nations, is an entity in which even the Vatican sit already recognize that there is one dilemma even among themselves, a dilemma that has been suffered since 1541, with conspiracies against governments and political systems, not only, but against even the Church of Christ and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. A conspiracy that most governments already have to confront, not in private, not as a mystery, but in public, under which even Roman Catholic historians have no other resource, have no other alternative, but even to talk about and to write about, even Roman Catholic historians. I'm referring to the Roman Catholic Jesuit order. I'm referring to Ignatius of Loyola as the founder of the Roman Catholic religious order called himself as the company of Jesus. Let me put it more originally as Ignatius of Loyola, his own founder, calling the militia of the Pope, the army of the Pope. Now the Dominicans, no the Franciscans, no the Capuchins, no the Salesians. No, no, no. No other religious order, regardless how new or old they are, have more relevance, as the papacy have, have more relevance today than the Jesuit order. Regardless of their, his, of their historical tragedy, because it's a tragedy. The history of the Jesuit order is one of the greatest tragedies and one of the greatest dark pages of history. To the point that even this very power, this very political power, not to uh, uh, the national level, but to a universal level, all over, the same very political power, the back, the rider of the white horse, the papacy, these very politicians, these very kings, these very emperors, these very governments of nations and countries has been challenged by the Jesuit order to the point that they have acted not in the name of Christ, not in the name of the gospel, not in the name of the apostles or their teachings, no. And their own authority as politicians, as kings and emperors, as president, as as governors of countries and nations, they have acted as Roman Catholics themselves to expel from their country, from their nation, from their lands, from among their people, they have been challenged to the point of expelling by law, by execution of law, the Jesuit order. 
the only religious order that has been a spell on their political mandates and decrees. It's strange. Well, most people would not like to hear this. As a matter of fact, you as a religious person, as a matter of fact, if you are a Jesuit priest, you yourself will say he is not knowing what he's talking about. He don't know history. He don't know the Jesuit order. Well, I will not appeal to my own personal experience as a Jesuit priest. I will appeal to the pages of history. You can deny who I was, but you can deny, you cannot deny history. You cannot deny the reality that beyond all the frame-ups, beyond all the cover-ups, beyond all the drunkenness that you have caused the inhabitants of the earth as a Jesuit, as a Jesuit order, as a religious order, you cannot deny the fact that already even Roman Catholic people and you yourself as a Jesuit priest are very much aware. You can cover up, you can keep deceiving, you can keep lying, you can keep distorting even history and historical fact. That is another reality being carried out by the rider of the black horse, the Jesuit order. Beginning with the founder in 1541 when the Jesuit order and the constitutions of the Jesuit order were brought before the Pope that gave the grant not only but the approval for those constitutions. Now we understand that the same very Pope they approve the religious order suffer the consequences of that approval. Not only him but several other popes that were being murdered and poisoned and killed because they rebel against the Jesuit order and they excommunicate and they expel and they disband the Jesuit order several times in their history. What was so fearful about Ignatius of Loyola and what was so fearful about the Jesuit order, his own religious order that he established himself, what was so fearful, so threatening that even popes, popes, were not only afraid of, but they were being poisoned and murdered. What was so threatening and so fearful about this religious order, about this Ignatius of Loyola, that even, even, those priests that were taken on their oath and induction, they were not able to fulfill the crimes and immoralities they were challenged to commit in the name of God, in the name of Ignatius and Loyola, in the defense of the Roman Catholic faith, and in the protection of the papacy, these very priests, they have to flee from the wraths of the Jesuit order and their oath already taken because they fear for their own life. What was so threatening about this peculiar particular religious order? They make themselves above every other religious order the most powerful, the most powerful religious order, not only but the most powerful institution, organization, and the whole planet Earth. Let's begin with the mystical power of this writer. How that power was granted and by whom? Now, Ignatius of Rochola, being the founder of the Jesuit order, he himself was the founder of the Illuminati. Not as later, through distortion of history, perversion of the gospel, and as a cover-up, even some Protestant historians and some even called Christian writers are pointing to the fact there were two ex-Jesuit priests, the ones that became the founders of the Illuminati. That is another lie of the same Jesuit order, another deceit, another way of framing up and bring about another cover-up to keep themselves protected against any light upon their darkness. 
What knew the Inquisition? Let's go to files and documents. What knew the Inquisition about Ignacio of Loyola before he became the founder of his own religious order as the Companies of Jesus? What was his organization? Previous to the Jesuit order, what was he the leader of? He was the leader of a secret, mysterious organization that was no other than the Luminati. Los Alumbrados, in Spanish, from the Latin root that came the transliteration. The Illuminati, meaning as a transliteration, Los Alumbrados. This is the way that the Inquisitors knew Ignatius, in yes, they knew him first as, as a very powerful and influential military person. As a matter of fact, from kings to emperors, he was being condecorated as one of the highest army individuals in Europe, one of the most powerful too, one of the greatest military strategists ever known to the history of military warfare in Europe and in the rest of the world in his very days. Does Satan knew this? Of course Satan knew this. Let me call your attention how Satan is very vigilant about the capacities and the intellects of people such as Ignatius of Loyola. Come with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. As I read here, you must understand that Satan, the devil himself, is confronting Christ in the desert. And here is how he confronts him. And this confrontation brings to us immediately to the fact that we see that is the first time that is being revealed in this very chapter 4 of the Gospel of Matthew and the temptation of Jesus Christ by the devil and the desert is the first time that is being revealed what areas of the world beside the people, beside all the ugly, horrifying things that the devil has brought into this planet, all the transgressions, all the immorality, all the drugs, all the crimes, all the deceit, beside and above all this, the devil for the first time has been revealed as one that has very much interested and always been interested in pursuing the universal control of the political system and the economical system. Listen to this, chapter 4. That within the laws of every country. Listen to this, chapter 4. Let me read for you as we read. Then was Jesus led up to the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward unhungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up into the holy city, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest of any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain, and show him all the kingdoms of the world, this planet, the very kingdom on which you live today. This very kingdom, there was no doubt about. You can see that even in the United States of America there were kingdoms here prior to this present system. They were aborigines of this land. They were people. They were tribes. The devil already previewed that. He knew what was to be developed after. Listen to this. And show him all the kingdoms of the world. 
no certain kingdoms, all, all the kingdoms of the world, including the United States of America. And the glory of them. What that means is the richness, the wealth, the power. And of course, the laws, the rule, these powers. And saith unto him, all the things will I give thee. Yes, the meaning. The devil can give the things to Christ. Does Jesus Christ deny that fact? No. He accepted. Because he knew there was a reality. Already, politically speaking, economically speaking, militarily speaking, God left the kingdoms of the earth in the hands of men as the Israelites choose to do. There was no longer a theocracy. He came to be democracies, theocracies, uh, no longer theocracy, but monarchies, and so on. Already, from the time of the prophet Samuel, we see the changes already. From God's government to men's governments. And I said unto him, all these things, all these things, will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Certainly, you understand what that means. That was just to fulfill all the power, not as a prince, but as a king. All what the devil was in need is for Christ to worship him then he will no longer be a prince over the kingdoms of the earth, he will be a king. The same pretensions of the Antichrist. As a matter of fact, to make it more clear, more pragmatic, more contemporary, the same pretensions and ambition of the Pope of Rome, John Paul II. You will say, well, doesn't sound like he's looking forward to that. Well, He's not only looking forward, he's working forward already. The fact that he is visiting every country more than any other pope, the fact that he is becoming more relevant and making the papacy more relevant to governments and nations as well, not only to Roman Catholic, but the fact that the papacy is becoming more relevant to the work of the Jesuit order at the level of education, at the level of economy, at the level of law, at the level of military level, a political level, scientific level, artistic level, that religious order is becoming more relevant because they are making more relevant the papacy than never before. That persuasion is not a utopia, it is already a reality, a reality with us, present with us. Why this writer is becoming more relevant is because he, they have, the Jesuit order, they have to now follow up with the riders before. The white horse, the red horse, the religious power and the political power. As a matter of fact, it's impressive to know that it's not by coincidence that this black horse is the third. It's not the first, it's not the second, it's the third. It's not even the fourth, because the fourth is the pale horse. But what the black horse is doing between the red, backing up the white, but behind the red, and between the red and the pale, that black horse is between the red and the black horse. What he's doing there? Historically, he always been there. Always. The Jesuits always been there. Between the political power and the religious power, not only, but the ecumenical power. Who are the greatest authors of the ecumenical? Who are the greatest authors of the charismatical renewal? Who has been the authors of all the so-called renewal, even from the Council of Trent down to our day? As a matter of fact, who were the authors of the Counter-Reformation as a way of renewal? The beginning of all the renewals in the Roman Catholic system began with the Council of Trent. Some people believe there was the Vatican Council the second. That is wrong. It's a distortion of reality, historical realities. The Jesuits begin the charismatical renewal already in the Council of Trent.
with the Council of Trent and by the Council of Trent. Was in favor of the Protestants? No, against it. But in a very sophisticated, theological, philosophical way. Today, more than theology and philosophy, the Jesuit order is chosen among the ecumenical and charismatic psychology. All the behavioral science are being implemented to carry out. Mystically speaking, is even dealing with parapsychology. As a matter of fact, we hypnosis to transcendental meditation. Listen to this right now. Again, listen very well. I'll give all the things to thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. This is how the devil challenged Christ himself in person. Physically in person. Can you imagine that the church will be less? The church has been challenged in that direction today. To television, to radio, to so-called Christian magazines, including Christianity Today. One of the most, one of the most, one of the most sophisticated channels of the proposal of one church and one political system. Of course, when they speak about one church, Christianity today is speaking about the church of the Antichrist, not the church of Christ. Some of us, they never has spoken about Christ, but about the Antichrist in the name of Christ. This very magazine, among so many others, they are already the greatest promoters of the kingdom of the Antichrist, never of the kingdom of the Antichrist. They do not follow up the principle of Christ, but the principles of the Antichrist, the persuasions of the popes of Rome, the persuasions of the so-called fathers of the church, but not the persuasion of the apostles' doctrine, not the persuasion of the doctrines of Jesus Christ, not the persuasion of these prophecies. If you care to take a time to know it, even Billy Grant himself, the co-author of these magazines as well of these corporations, beginning with his father, they always, always, they were very much eager to get into the ecumenical side. And they were part of the organizers of every other ecumenical activity under the pretext of the preaching of the gospel. What a shame and what a perversion of the gospel. Under the pretext of the preaching of the gospel, they have arrived to the greatest climax. Catholics are now joining Billy Graham Crusades to evangelize Catholics and to evangelize the rest of the world. How Catholics can evangelize Catholics is a matter of question under the light of prophecy not only but of the teachings and doctrines of Christ under the grace of Christ under the autonomy of Jesus Christ under the grace of Christ come with me as we go back to chapter 6 of the book of Revelation to the Black Horse Commission listen to this who see upon that black horse. Speaking about mystical power, this rider have all the mystical powers. Enough to appeal to law, enough to appeal to economy. There is no other religious order that have to do more with the international economy in the past history, and there is no other religious order that have more, they have done more with law and legislation that the Jesuit order. As a matter of fact, the greatest, the greatest centers of teachings of law today, and the greatest centers of teachings of economy, and the greatest centers from university to the greatest colleges around this planet of political science and behavioral science are all in the hands of the Jesuits. Not only as priests, but 
but now as laymans, trained by Jesuits, and trained and already given degrees from Jesuits, universities and colleges, and under the sponsorships of the persuasions of the Jesuit philosophy, who has been working tremendously with all the economical programs of every nation, including myself as a Jesuit priest, did work. I have the documents to show, in Spanish at least, works for the economical programs of one of the nations in South America, Ecuador. As they did it with Paraguay from very early days, as they did it for Brazil, as they did it for Chile, Argentina, as they did it for Nicaragua, as they did it for El Salvador, Honduras, as they did it for, uh, for Spain, as they have done for many other countries, from Europe all the way to Africa, including Japan and China and India, from the very early days. The advisors of even Genghis Khan were Jesuits. The Emperor Genghis Khan had economical advisors, they were Jesuits. Scientific advisors, they were Jesuits. The Koreans, they did have the first governments that allowed the Jesuits to come in in the 1700th century, they were Jesuits. And what else we can say about the fulfillment of this prophecy, to the point that you not only read the prophecy, to the point that you not only are able to hear the prophecy when it's being read, but that you can see, see with your own eyes, through history, that this prophet has been implemented under the power of a sovereign God to our history. That we have no longer have to wait or false interpretations of these four riders, of these four horsemen, as we have seen in films, as we read in books, including one of Billy Graham's books. Given all kinds of false interpretations where people cannot see anything, they will never be able to see what already throughout history for hundreds of years has been already seen. Five hundred years ago, these riders begin to ride this planet. 500 years ago, from the minute, already, from the minute that Ignatius of Rajola brought his constitution, the secret constitution, not even the constitution that are known today, the secret constitution before Paul, Paul III. Listen to this. Now we understand better what is happening today. What is happening today on the false interpretation of these prophecies is that you are not able to see. And the revelation emphasizes and every step of this prophecy, come and see. And reply, John said, and I look, and I saw. And when he had opened the third seal, I hear the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. He saw it. Why you cannot see? Why most of the churches and Christian churches cannot see? Why most even of men of God cannot see? What can be the persuasion? I will not say the men of God in the church of Christ deceive. I will say persuasion, temptation. What power? What power is dealing with men of God and the church of God that are this point in many areas of the world? The church is not seen and men of God are not seen. When the world is in darkness, who is going to bring light to them? I am the light of the world, Jesus said. I am the light of the world. Whosoever shall follow me shall never be in darkness. Shall never be in darkness, not only that they shall be light. In the Sermon of the Mount, he referred to that same teaching. He said, ye are the light of the world. 
the light was not made for you to cover up. But the men can see, the men can open their eyes to what you see, to what you know, to what you understand, to what do you believe as a Christian, as a man of God, as a church of God, to what you believe, to what you see, to what you understand. Men will never be able to see, much less to understand, much less to believe the gospel, unless you yourself can see. See, the rider of the black horse and the commissions of the rider of the black horse. The identity even of the color, as well happened with the identity of the color and the, even the superficial dress of the Pope, as well the color red and every other political system of red always from Roman Empire to fascism, to communism, they always identify that red color, always. You can see the flags of all these systems and you can find red and black along the lines. Today, that red and black is on the march, beginning to flourish more than never so. There is a flag in the Jesuit order that Ignatius of Lojola already established right from the beginning. There was no other person that did it. Ignatius of Lojola. The flag that they even have among the Illuminati was taken, along with the constitutions of the Illuminati, was taken into the Jesuit order. As a matter of fact, the very constitutions of the Jesuit order that Ignatius brought to Pope Paul III these were most of the rules, the secret constitution of the Illuminati. All what Nezir of Jola did, once the inquisit, inquisitors discovered what he was doing, and once the Nezir of Jola was arrested by an inquisitor after much exploration, much investigation, much espionage on him and his activities, not only in and north of Spain, but throughout the entire country, throughout the entire kingdoms of Spain, and then throughout the entire kingdoms of Europe. They follow him wherever he went. They follow, they spy on him. The inquisitors were observing him for many years after he retired from the army. Before he retired from the army, already being that army active men before he was engaged and that satanic secret organization of the Illuminati, being so that he was the founder before he left the army. He left the army and became fully engaged in bringing more members from all the monarchies, from monarchs to princes and countess and countesses and princesses. They were being enrolled among the Illuminati and his organization. This is why when the inquisitors, by the time that the inquisitors finally put their hands on him and said you are arrested and you are going to be convicted of a crime against the Catholic faith because you are holding secret meetings against Catholic teaching. He immediately told the inquisitors, now on the contrary, we are protecting and defending and preserving Catholic teaching from our position in secret. We are watching for those who are not faithful to Catholic faith. On the contrary, we are helping and assisting the preservation of the past as that is about to fall. The inquisitors here are very serious in National Loyola, nevertheless, they doubt. They were ignorant people. They were not as intellectual as Inez was. Most of the inquisitors, they were not able even to read or write. Let me explain this. That was the order that was established, the religious order that was established by so-called San Domingo, or Santo Domingo de Guzman. San Dominic of Guzman. Who was this man? 
that established the Dominican order. Who was? He was no other person than the author of the Rosary. He was the one that fabricated the Rosary. He was the one that brought about the Rosary. Nevertheless, he was the inventor of the most horrifying instruments and utensils of torment. Torch. He invent every other utensil and instrument to bring about confessions out of the mouth of their victims. And most of their victims of the Inquisition were Christians. These are documents too in the files of the Vatican. As I approach in my own career as a Jesuit priest, the times that I was able to go through these files, I myself, I was confused already. I could not understand how men could judge another man by the fact that they were confessing that Christ was their Lord and Savior, because they were not believing in the sacraments, but they did believe in Christ and his doctrines and his teachings. Being so that I was not allowed myself as a priest to bow to the Bible without magisterium and tradition, then I reject the Bible for the final solution that was taking me to an eternal death. I decide that the Bible was the one that was placing me in trouble, not the tradition, not the magisterium, but the Bible. And being so that I reject the scripture, I begin to deal entirely with magisterium and tradition. But that is where the confusion arrived too. Once that I begin to deal with this very mystery of iniquity. This very mystical individual, Ignatius of Lozola. The man that after he was arrested and convicted and already, already prepared to die and fire, burn alive, already, he immediately was called saying that he have a special permission by the general inquisitor to present himself before the Pope, Pius III, in order to reveal to the Pope himself what he knew about those who were conspiring against the papacy. This is when Ignacio Loyola was, fro was, bro was, brought, was brought to the very presence of this Pope, under the safeguard of the armies of several kings in Europe. They all joined. This is why the political power had that influence to stop the inquisitor, even the general inquisitor. The letters that came from princes, the letters that came from emperors and kings in Europe, protecting Ignatius of Loyola, stopping his death, accused of heresy against Catholic faith. You can see that he had very little time to prepare himself and to prepare for his introduction to Pope and to bring him facts, documents, that he and his secret meeting around Europe was protecting the papacy, was protecting the Pope, was defending the Catholic faith. He must prove it. And he did it. He brought the very constitution of the Illuminati, where he declared a universal government and a universal religion. Now, he arranged to be that religion, the Roman Catholic religion. He arranged for that universal for that universal men of political power, for that universal figure, for that universal personality, he arranged to be the Pope, based in the theology of Augustine, hundreds of years before, where Augustine already, one of the so-called fathers of the church, Augustine himself, this devil, this child of the devil, Augustine of Epona, himself declared the Pope to be 
the ruler above all the rulers of the nations of the world. Agustin said that. Theologically, philosophically, and then biblically, he will go as far as to the book of Genesis to demonstrate that when God created all the universal system, God already placed the sun as the center of the universe, the moon and the earth. And that divine order, he said, the Pope has been placed in the history of the nation, in the history of the government, in the history of the world. The Pope become to be the sun where the moon become the governments of the earth. For that matter, being so that the moon have no light of her own, the moon received the light from the sun to reflect it upon the earth, upon the people of the earth. He said, that is the office of the Pope according God's divine sovereign. God has decreed that the Pope be the light that enlightens all the king, all the emperor, all the president, all the governors of the earth. And without the direction, persuasion, guidance, wisdom, intelligence of the Pope, no government is allowed to succeed or survive. That was the commission of the black horse or the rider riding the black horse. Even the color identify the founder of the religious order, the company of Jesus, not only, but the followers, the successors of the founder. Every Jesuit general called as the Black Pope. The Black Pope. Not only, but the Black Order is the Black Order, is well known as the Black Order. We have been challenged today more than never before. Because today, after so much struggle, so much evidence and proof about how evil the Jesuit religious order is, right from the beginning and establishment, beginning with his founder, a pagan, a satanic instrument of satanic power to the point of levitation. He will levitate, giving lectures to his disciples. He levitate in the air. That is how powerful his mystical powers were of Ignatius of Rojola. And that is how powerful the religious order began to work and function in the world through occult, through powers of darkness, through especially the seven steps of the spiritual exercises, visualization, where hypnosis and all kinds of behavioral senses are employed and deployed and implemented throughout such a diabolic experiences. Very religious, but very satanic. Every connection of every face of the occult meet the experiences of Ignatius of Loyola, from spiritism to satanism, from satanism to voodoo, from voodoo to every other face of the call, to santeria. Every one of these faces meet their common point in history. As a matter of fact, you can see what we are dealing with. We are dealing with the powers of darkness on earth as their executioners, the ones that carry out the missions of the devil on earth through mystical powers, to back the political power, to back the religious power of the papacy. As we are getting ready to get into the prophetical message of the rider of the pale horse, I invite you now to pray with me. Father, in the name of the Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I beg thee, O Lord God, that at this very moment, as I come before thy throne of grace, the children of darkness may be brought under the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There you empower the church that 
you empower thy servant, that you empower thy children to the power of thy Holy Spirit, that this powerful darkness may be broken and the light of the gospel may be brought to the hearts, to the minds, to the lives, to the emotions, to the sentiments of every religious person under these powers of the occult. O oh, Father, I beg thee in the name of our Lord Jesus that empower thy children, thy church in this very crucial moment of darkness upon this planet and upon this earth. As we see apostasy, as we see the fulfillment of thy prophecy, as we see the carry out.